I'm joined by Chris Roebuck from the Cash Business School in the City of London. Um, Chris, to what extent has this been a failure of Theresa May's leadership? I think what uh, people outside of UK need to understand, looking at this complete madness, is that the British parliamentary system is slightly different from other systems. And historically, for 500 years, it's worked on the basis that a government gets elected, they have complete control, they don't need to talk to anybody else, they decide what's going to happen. Now, unlike European systems, where to get a government you have to create a coalition, you have to have consensus. So the concept of consensus in that, that building over there is pretty slim. So Theresa May did what British politicians would expect to do. She decided, this is my plan, I'm in the government, I'm going to negotiate it, then I'm going to tell everybody that they have to accept it. But from the perspective of British or organisational leadership perspectives, that's to some degree madness, in that what you need to do is, if you need to persuade people to get a plan through a group of people, you need to consult them first, produce a plan that they all agree with, and then negotiate it outside, which is what she failed to do. And of course, the plan of strong government, strong leadership in the British tradition only works if you've got a healthy majority. And we all remember the desperate gamble she took in 2017 to get a bigger majority, and she failed. She ended up with an even smaller, actually, a minority government. That's at the heart of her problem, isn't it? That, is the, her, that was her fundamental mistake, and, and clearly everybody knows that she is reliant on a few members of the DUP to scrape her through. Uh, she negotiated the wrong deal for the DUP. In terms of the logic that perhaps a European politician would have used, it would have been at the outset to consult everybody, find a deal that's acceptable to everybody, or a consensus that gets you through, and then put that to the EU. But also... She... That, but that's going to happen next week, potentially. Is it, is it too late for that uh, to happen? She, as you mentioned when we started, what's happened on Wednesday and what will happen on Monday Hopefully, the British Parliament will recognise the concept of consensus. But what is also interesting is that Theresa May has stuck to this British I'm in charge of government perspective. Her deal failed once, she didn't change it. It failed a second time, she didn't change it. It's failed a third time. And any leader anywhere would know that when your plan doesn't work the first time, you might think about adapting it. In her defence, some might say she didn't change it because the EU said it wasn't changeable. Oh, yes, yeah, she, she didn't change it, but she needed to keep the plan that hard to keep her Brexiteers on board. So she could have gone more pro-Europe, but that would have caused the Conservative Party probably to split in half. So her, her main aim was to try and keep the Conservative Party as one block and stop it splitting. And the Conservative Party's been split over Europe for 40 years, ever since we joined. But to be honest, I mean, the Labour Party haven't helped. The DUP haven't helped. So it, it goes back to that fundamental culture within the British Parliament of we don't do consensus, we just stick to our position. But Wednesday showed, amazingly, that actually if you put the right thing to them, they will work together. Chris, that's all we have time on. Thank you very much.